Now then, people, and welcome back to the Just Your Football Show. Good morning and happy weekend. I, of course, am wearing my England colours today because, of course, later on this evening, England will get retribution against Italy in the Nations League game. I will be doing a watch-along for that game. If you want to join me for it, please make sure you do half past seven. I'll be going live. It'll be nice to get back into the watch-along groove after having some time off. A well-deserved break, I may add. Um, before we get into today's video, as always, smash a like, subscribe to the channel, get your comments in, and of course, hit that notification bell. So, transfer season, silly season, if you like, because Arsenal are considering a move for the best available Premier League winger around in, of course, Rafinha. There has been no formal offer yet for the 25-year-old, but Mikel Arteta, He's coming out all guns blazing and saying he is prepared to battle Barcelona for the signature of Leeds United winger Rafinha. Of course, Arsenal missed out on Champions League football, but are set to spend big this summer to chase the top four. Um, Arteta has it all to do. That's something that, that's definitely out there. This is do or die time for him. So you can understand why he's making sure he has a squad capable of pushing for Champions League football. Whether or not they will, that remains to be seen. But look, we know Rafinha is tipped to leave Ellen Road, right? As a fan, I am resigned to the fact that by next season, Rafinha will not be at this football club, okay? I, I still say that now with chest. I don't want him to leave. Let me just caveat that. I still believe he'll be a Barcelona player come the end of the window. I do think it will rumble on. But of course, there are a number of suitors that will be also tracking Rafinha. He's had standout displays for Leeds United over the last two seasons since his arrival from Wren. Um, he scored 11 goals in 35 league appearances for Leeds this season, uh, got three assists and obviously played a massive role in terms of keeping Leeds in the Premier League. Without Rafinha, we ain't about. You know what I mean? We're already in the Championship looking at bringing in different players and certainly losing Rafinha for a cut-down price. Um, he is now the starting right winger for Brazil as well. Uh, he's one of the star turns in that Brazil uh, national side. So you can understand why clubs would want him. And Mikel Arteta believes he has secret weapons at his disposal that will help get this deal over the line. Um, firstly, Rafinha played alongside centre-back Gabriel when they were coming through their youth ranks at Brazil side Avi, okay? He also plays alongside Martinelli for Brazil. And Edu, Arsenal's sporting director, transfer guru, boasts a number of strong Brazilian connections in the transfer market. Of course, Barcelona's current financial situation could prove to work in the Gunners' favours as well. So there is a lot going for them, you may add, right? Um, they have European football, OK? It's not the Champions League, but they are playing in the Europa League. And I believe Pepe is due to depart. 70-odd million they paid for that guy. Wow. At least if they were to get Rafinha and they are going to spend 60, 70 million, they know they're getting a decent player. They ain't no Pepe. You know what I mean? They ain't Pepe, Pepe the pig, as uh, as uh, Alioski uh, once, once coined the phrase. Um, and look, Rafinha has the ability to play on either flank. OK, so that's an element that will please Arteta, um, of course, in providing more depth and competition in his squad. Now, in rebuttal to all them positives there, he ain't no depth player, right? Rafinha ain't no depth player. Rafinha is a starting player in any side, yeah? Their most important attacker, their best player, if you like, is Bukaya Saka, OK? Where does he play? He is on right wing. Now, don't tell me Rafinha is going to rock up at Arsenal to be second fiddle to Bukayo Saka. Now, they may say, oh, well, we want to bring him on, on the left, but Martinelli plays there at times. I don't see Rafinha wanting to play in a secondary position because right wing's his favoured position. He plays there for Brazil. That could cause issues in terms of keeping his place in the in the, uh, in the the Brazil setup. Um, he's a Champions League player. He is a player that should be fighting for titles and, um, you know, getting to the finals of, of, of cups um, and certainly should be a Champions League player. Let's not forget he left the Champions League in Rennes, OK, 
to come to the Premier League to put himself in the shop window, to get that big move to one of the world's elite clubs. That's why he did that. You know, he took a sideways step in a sense, or a back, no, he took a backwards step. I know Leeds are a huge club, but he went from playing his trade in the Premier League, uh, sorry, in the uh, League 1, and the Champions League to come to the Premier League at a team that had just been promoted. So it was a backward step for him at that time, but it was a step that's worked because he's come on, he's lit the Premier League up, and he's now going to make that next move. It doesn't make sense for me, for Rafinha, his next move to be Arsenal when they're not getting Champions League. If they'd have got Champions League football, OK, you may have a case to answer. I still don't think he makes that move because for me, much like, you know, Arteta believes he's got the secret weapons in, in, in Gabriel, you know, um, playing with him at Avi, for example. His agent's Deco. He's related or, or very close to the Ronaldinho family. So that usurps that straight away. Barcelona's his dream move. You know, this this chat about Martinelli, him playing with him for Brazil, he plays with Neymar. He's got connections with Barcelona. You know, I don't I don't see Martinelli as being the one that gets this over the line. And as Edu, Arsenal's transfer guru, the South American scout transfer guru for Barcelona is Deco. Ronald, uh, sorry, not Ronald, the Rafinha's agent is Deco. Like, all these positives that, that, that are there for Arsenal or Arsenal fans may cling on to are usurped by Rafinha's links to Barcelona, i.e. Ronaldinho and Deco. Deco's his agent, man. That is so big. And he works for Barcelona. Do you know what I mean? He's their South American like correspondent, if you like, in the scouting world. So I, I just don't see these positives that Arsenal are coming with being you know, anywhere close to what Barcelona can offer him. Now, of course, we know Barcelona's financial issues and he may not make that move there. I'm still convinced by the end of the transfer window, he will be a Barcelona player. And if it won't be in the summer, it'll be in, uh, after the World Cup. But at that point, they'll probably have to play more because he might win the World Cup and have an absolutely barnstorming performance. Do you know what I mean? And let's not forget, if, if that Barcelona move doesn't materialise, there are a number of clubs that would be peaked straight away that Rafinha's available as he's not moving to Barcelona. Liverpool have been mooted at having an interest. Bayern Munich, West Ham, but again, West Ham, Arsenal. I know Arsenal fans won't like it, but it's a similar sort of move. Okay, Arsenal are a much bigger club. Okay, I'm doing them a disservice there. But you get what I'm saying in terms of what they can offer right now. Liverpool played in every possible game. Bayern Munich, German champions, Champions League, etc. You know, so even if that Barcelona move doesn't come off, there are a number of suitors there that have lodged interest in the past. There is not a chance for me that Rafinha opts for Arsenal over then clubs that I've just mentioned, Bayern Munich and Liverpool. There's just two. But know that if that Barcelona move doesn't happen and Rafinha, let's say, for example, Arsenal put in a bid for Rafinha and it's accepted, much like Liverpool did with Luis Diaz when he was mooted to move to Tottenham, all them other clubs are going to be peaked and say, yo, Arsenal have had a bit accepted. He's having talks. Let's get in there. Well, Rafinha, they can offer you Europa League. We can offer you Champions League and this and this and this. Do you see what I'm saying? So I just don't see a situation where Rafinha pulls on an Arsenal shirt. It seems really strange. And look, the link has legs in terms of the credible sources that it's coming from, okay? The Telegraph, there's a number of sources, a number of reports coming out. Um, and I, I believe he will leave Leeds this summer. You know that. I've said that a number of times. I think Calvin gives us one, one year, Rafinha might leave. Maybe they both leave. I hope they don't, but maybe they do. I do believe he will leave Leeds this summer, but it will not be to the Emirates. And you can click that up, Arsenal fans, if you're watching this. But surely just... All the arguments I've just gave you as opposed to, to reasons why you won't. You know, even the most hardened Arsenal fan might look at it and think, mm, yeah, he's probably got a point there. He's probably got a point there. Because all the positives that there are, it's usurped by Barcelona. And if we're being honest, if Barcelona move doesn't happen, when that bid goes in, if it's accepted, a number of other clubs are coming sniffing. And Bakaya Saka is arguably one of their best players, a great prospect playing in his preferred position. OK, Rafinha can play from the left. Never been as good from the left, and you have Martinelli that plays there. And whenever we've played Arsenal, he's tore our fullback, uh, um, yeah, to, to shreds from from that 
you know, left wing position. I know you Arsenal will be after a striker, so he's not going to be playing central. Eddie and Ketty is signing a new deal, etc., etc., etc. It just doesn't make sense for Rafinha to make a move to Arsenal for me. Um, and I, yeah, I put my house on him not being an Arsenal player. I think he goes to Barcelona. If it's not Barcelona, it'll be another huge club. And I'm not saying Arsenal are a huge club because they are, but one that's really huge right now and, and, and current in terms of what they can offer Champions League because that's where he wants to play and he played there for Ren he made that backward step to come to the Premier League because as we know Premier League is the pinnacle look how much exposure you get and he's got that and now he's wanted by elite clubs like Barcelona you know and Bayern Munich and Liverpool um, and I just don't put Arsenal in, I like Arsenal let me just caveat that I just don't put them in that elite club anymore right now and that's where Rafinha, Rafinha won't be bothered about history Rafinha's not looking at Arsenal and saying, oh, yeah, they were good once upon a time when they had XYZ. There's a transitional period at Arsenal still going on, and Rafinha doesn't make that move for me because he's destined for bigger and better things. That's my thoughts on Rafinha to Arsenal. I hope you've liked it. Arsenal fans probably haven't, but I think it's worth putting my two pennies in. And let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure you join me tonight for the watch along, of course, for the Nations League um, as England get retribution against Italy. Uh, 7.30, I'll be live. I'll see you there. Peace out. Leeds is